Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. Friday, already a day to cheer about, but today is just going to be so gorgeous. Makes it even better. Tornado possible with this, mainly to the west of Gunnersville right now, just to the south and east of Scant City. That's now moved on the southeast side of Interstate 59, but that's where we would see some rotation just south of Collinsville. So if you're in DeKalb County, do not travel south on I-59. That's a sign of debris, which would mean that there's likely a tornado on the ground right now moving north and east 15 20 even 30 miles per hour Hatton, hillsborough all dealing with heavy rain and you're in the area for the highest risk of flooding the heaviest of that rain right now rolling through the shoals and that's bringing heavy rainfall gusty winds and you're starting to see frequent lightning bolts popping up on the map that means that there's quite a bit of energy in these storms a brighter start to the day than what we saw a few hours ago with all that rain we're here for the keenum golf classic you see the golf carts already out behind me they're ready to go it's a full tournament but we'd love to have you come down, come say hey, help raise money for a good cause, trying to beat cancer here. Talked with a couple of drivers and crew chiefs earlier today about how the weather affects the cars. Here at Talladega, wind the biggest issue. Light showers moving across Highway 43, and the difference with these is these are moving from southeast to north and west, and that will be the general pattern here, not only today, but again into tomorrow. <laughs> feeding these storms with that strong south wind. If you walk out the door today, no doubt you've felt that strong breezy wind. If you haven't been outside, you've heard it uh, whipping around outdoors, especially in a high profile vehicle because we're in here in an Equinox, which isn't too big. But if you're in a van, if you're in a truck, if you're in a semi, those winds are really going to cause an issue out here and the visibility is poor. So take it very slow if you must be on the roads. And this is the highest the water has ever been since they built the dams over the Wilson Dam. Now, with that water rising, you've heard Sheila talk about Highway 20 underwater. So you know how I, I want you to help me cool down? How? Bring me <laughs> to Pina, Pina Coladas. Coladas. In the commercials. Question is, can Arthur save you 15% or more on car insurance? <laughs> and we've been programming nonstop so far this morning. In fact, the line, not just here at the table, but it's stretching all the way into the sports section out here. How long will these storms stick around? And what's the rest of the week bring us? We'll have a look in your full forecast after you get that cup of coffee. But the good news is we haven't built up as much instability east of I-65 yet today. However, we still have quite a bit of moisture. We do have that shear, and man, that's pretty impressive just looking at this radar scan you can see at least four or five one right behind the banner one just towards the west of Hamilton you can one two three four possibly five supercell storms now as Brad was mentioning if there are going to be any that really take off we probably would pay, place the bets on the ones towards Hamilton and the one just southwest of Hamilton because they're not moving through air that's already uh, pretty much disturbed we've got this strong south flow you probably felt it walking outdoors today gusts 30 to 40 miles per hour so what those are doing this is pulling that air northward. What happens is when we get this rain and even the blow off, you see how the lighter rain over right now, Lawrence County, that blow off cools the atmosphere down. So that south wind, that's what we call inflow for these storms. And as that inflows into these storms towards the north, they're pulling in cooler air. That's weakening them. Uh, and that's why we're seeing these storms in the Lauderdale County, Culver County, kind of weaken a bit as they move north and east. But my bet would be on these storms just to the west of Double Springs, south of Hamilton, to take off over the next hour or so because they're going to be moving through air that really hasn't been disturbed at all. And that tornado watch does include that entire area, again, in effect until 7 o'clock. Well, good morning, everybody. The remnants of Hurricane Barry continue to circulate over the Missouri area, and that's bringing storms just south of Little Rock. Heavy rain continues to batter parts of Arkansas, leading to flash flooding there just west of the Mississippi River. And this energy will finally start to scoot east as we go throughout the day today. We'll have what we call a short wave in the upper atmosphere, and that's going to help kick the center of low pressure off towards the east later on today and into tomorrow. What that does is takes these bands of storms and pushes them towards the valley later on today. Now here's a snapshot future radar three o'clock as that progresses eastward. That'll bring the chance at 
storms to the shoals right about the time you're heading out of work about around five or six o'clock this evening and these progress east and northeast in the middle Tennessee as well as north central parts of Alabama. The good news is I don't expect everybody to deal with these storms and they should weaken as they make their way east. However, we're expected to wake up to some more rain and thunderstorm activity tomorrow morning, and that'll be with us into the middle of the day on Wednesday, bringing heavy rain at times. Some spots could see upwards of half an inch to an inch of rain. This will all be localized with heavier rainfall being over an inch. So keep that in mind. There could be some flooded spots because of these storms later on tomorrow as these storms make their way through and that heavy rain and the cloud cover likely keeping temperatures suppressed into the low 80s. Now, as we get towards the end of the week, summer really starts to crank up yet again. Mid 90s out there for Friday and Saturday. We're going to be looking at a feels like temperature Friday afternoon, potentially into the mid to 110 degree mark. I'm First Alert Meteorologist Brandon Spinner at Talladega Super Speedway. As with any outdoor sport, weather can play a major impact. But in NASCAR, the littlest change in weather can create major impacts on the racetrack. There's a lot of science and engineering that goes into the setup and development of a race car in NASCAR. But a factor that many may forget about is the weather. So we go faster when it's cooler and we slip and slide a lot more when it's hot and slick. Track surface temperatures, rainfall and wind speed all play a major role in how a car drives on the track. But both drivers and crew chiefs say that there's one other factor that may have the biggest impact. I think the biggest factor for us with the weather is is the sun. You know, whether the sun is out or cloud cover, you know, that, that can change the track surface temperature uh, 10 degrees in a matter of a couple minutes. Um, I, I, would, I would say it's just, just the, the cloud cover and, and, and sunlight. The more sun, the more rubber it'll take. Since Talladega is a super speedway with draft racing, sunshine and temperatures don't play as much of an impact. However, the wind could cause some problems. Wind is a little bit of an issue. It can buffer your car around, which aids uh, to, to the wrecks happening when you're only running six inches apart. The good news for drivers and fans, the weekend weather looks to be perfect. Reporting at Talladega Super Speedway, I'm meteorologist Brandon Spinner, WAFF 48 News.